Everyman Driver Nation. My name is Nolan Merrill, and I'm going to show you this 2018 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD. We'll take a detailed look at the exterior, the interior, the truck bed, then go for a test drive, and I'll show you what this heavy duty truck is all about. Thank you everybody so much for tuning in. This is the High Country trim, so this thing will start up at about $72,500 when you can typically get into a heavy duty truck, the 2500 for in the low 30,000s. So one problem I have with that is that we only have halogen headlights, that's all we get. And there's no LEDs or HIDs like the light duty Silverado, but on the LTZ and up, we do get fog lights, which is nice. You have this big Chevy classic grill right here. And this is actually a real hood scoop up on top and it's a big brawny hood. It looks pretty nice, it looks pretty mean when you're behind the wheel driving it. Of course you get the Duramax stamp on the side because we've got the 6.6 .6 liter diesel. So what do y'all think of the way this looks? Not a whole lot different than the light duty truck but you can tell it's a little bit beefier. Another thing with the LTZ package and up in this high country is we get these power adjustable folding mirrors. So the mirrors can fold in not only do they fold in, but they also have lights on the back of them and lights on the other side for guidance lights. And they are nice and bright, uh, which is very helpful if you're going to be backing up, towing, anything like that. This paint color is Cajun Tint Code Red. It's a little bit dark right now. Sometimes it looks a little bit brighter and it pops and I think it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty sharp. Wheels will range from 17 to 20 inch, and we have the 20 inch wheels right here because we have the high country trim, and those will sit on 265 width tires. So one complaint here is these running boards. Uh, they do come standard, which is nice, but these are the ones with the slats that run out away from the vehicle instead of parallel to the vehicle, and in my experience in some northern winters, they can get kind of slippery, but it is a very tall step in, so it's nice to have some, some uh, running boards as well. And these are the six inch chrome steps that come standard. To top off your high country trim, of course you get the chrome accent by the windows there. You get the chrome door handles, your big high country badge. A lot of chrome on this truck and it really shines and it really pops. Ground clearance will vary depending on the model, but this one will get about nine and a half inches of ground clearance. And of course with Chevrolet, we have their signature corner bumper step, which does come in handy, especially on a taller truck like this as well as the integrated handle in the truck bed. Very easy to get in and out of this and the light duty trucks. On top of that, we also have an automatic locking rear differential, which is standard on this truck. And that comes in handy in low traction situations, especially if you don't want to shift into four wheel drive. One wheel spins, the other one will lock up and you've got positive traction on both sides. This tailgate is lockable with our backup camera back there. It's also an easy lift and lower tailgate which is always nice, easy to open it, easy to close it, anybody can do it. We have parking sensors on the back and the front, our big diesel exhaust right there. And on this particular model, the driver alert package, which is optional on the LTZ and up, we get lane departure warning, forward collision alert, safety alert seat, as well as the front and rear park assist that I just mentioned. Like I said, this is an easy lift and lower tailgate, therefore it will not slam. Standard on this high country trim, we do get this spray in bed liner, plus we have optional LED box lighting. And LED box lighting does help for sure. Of course, we have in, in bed lights as well as our typical cargo light up there. And as I was saying earlier, the mirrors do put off quite a bit of light as well, shooting out the side of the truck, which is very handy. So just standard here, we have a couple tie downs up on the top of the bed on both sides, as well as on the bottom. And those top tie downs can pivot. And you can even see the, the fifth wheel is ready to go right there. In the back of the bed, you got your Chevy logo. Plus we have a power sliding rear window. And then over on the side, we do have our plug right over here. Now we have the six and a half foot bed with the crew cab. You can get an eight foot long box. The bed is actually 21 inches tall from the rail to the floor and 51 inches between the wheel wells. So depending on what you need to throw back there, that can be helpful. It is uh, fairly wide between those wheel wells, actually. As equipped, our payload number is not as impressive as it could be. It's 2,513 pounds in this four wheel drive crew cab short box, but that can go dramatically up depending on the box length and depending on 
uh, if you move down to two wheel drive. But let's talk about the powertrain. So on the base heavy duty 2500 Silverado, you get a six liter V8 naturally aspirated, no diesel, no turbo. That's 360 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque. But in this model right here, available on the LTZ and high country trim, we can get the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel. That comes with the Allison transmission, which is a six speed and the non-diesel still comes with the six speed, but just a heavy duty six speed transmission. So this Duramax diesel, the 6.6 .6 liter puts out 445 horsepower and 910 pound feet of torque. And that comes with a 36 gallon fuel tank. And we'll talk about fuel economy, what I've been getting on our test drive. Like I said, with the payload, 2,500, not a lot, but that does go significantly up into about 3,500 range, depending on what you get. Let's also talk about the towing. So conventional towing will be 13,000. Fifth wheel, 14,800. The max, on depending on your trim, will be 18,100, and the 3,500 HD can tow up to 23,300. And I'll be sure to put those specs and like a trailering guide down below because there's just so many numbers to remember. The good thing about towing with this heavy duty is there's a lot of things that you get to help you tow better. Some of those things will include trailer sway control with our stability track, hill start assist, your tow haul mode button inside, digital steering assist, Echo Master four camera trailer system is available, your backup rear camera, trailering mirrors with LED lights that I showed you earlier, a diesel exhaust brake, trailer brake controller, auto grade braking, as well as you get four wheel disc brakes and it comes with Chevrolet's Duralife rotors. All Silverados give us this key fob, which is nice. It does have remote start on the LTZ and up, and it does come with a normal key. Remote start has been very nice in the hot Texas summers. So hop inside the Silverado HD and you'll find a huge spacious cabin. These seats are very plush and they're comfortable. In this top high country trim, we've got the leather. They are 12 way power heated and ventilated and the ventilation works extremely well. The 12-way power includes four-way lumbar and the high country symbol embossed in the top of the headrest, which is a nice touch as well. Everything in here seems to be in a good place. This armrest on both sides, they're both soft, they both feel good. Um, if you're curious about space or you fitting in here, I know a couple big guys, 167, over 400 pounds, and he fits in his Silverado perfectly fine. So, should be no trouble for anybody. These pedals are also adjustable, so... If you're shorter, you can get the pedals to come out and get the seat up pretty high and you shouldn't have any trouble either. The steering wheel does tilt quite a bit, both up and down. The telescoping is a little bit more limited, but it does still telescope a fair amount and there's really no trouble getting comfortable in here. I've had no trouble at all. Now that we've hopped inside the Silverado, let me give you a quick tour of the inside before we go for a drive. So we do get some soft materials up here and even softer material right here soft armrest with the stitching running across now the impressive thing with these doors is the amount of space we've got a cubby there we've got big cubby down here two actually pretty large bottle holders not to mention our bose speaker system and those are large enough to fit a tall bottle just like that so that comes in handy we've got this wood trim piece right here a good grab handle and then our mirror controls over there and the button to fold the mirrors inside. It's a nice big, big door handle right there. Two-way power or two-way memory seats right here as well. Go on and shut the door. It's a pretty solid door thunk, not too bad. Over on the left, we have our trailer brake controls right here, four-wheel drive controls, but you'll notice, unlike the light duty or the, even the Colorado, there's no automatic four-wheel drive switch, which would be nice to see. Interior light controls, regular light and fog light controls. Nice big vent over there. So what do you all think of this layout? Obviously, this is not the most updated design. Chevy's kind of had this in their light duty truck for a little while as well. Uh, but we do get a leather wrap steering wheel, and this is heated with controls on the left for cruise control and our heated steering wheel and our front collision right there as well as voice controls and then controls for our information display right up here and let me show you that Let's start it up i do i do actually enjoy being able to start a key i know some people like the convenience of push button but there's just something about it more on this steering wheel is it is soft and leather but it's kind of skinny. I would like to see it be a little bit thicker, maybe with a couple grips or something, but it's a large steering wheel. It's comfortable to hold. You can put your hand in several different areas. 
So with this screen, there's quite a bit of information that we can see on here. Um, just your digital speed, and it even will pick up your, basically the, the street sign, the speedometers, or the miles per hour, not speedometers, but and then trip, uh, that has been my actual fuel economy over 300 miles, so uh, I'd love to know what you guys get. It's not EPA rated, but so I'm always kind of curious to see how that goes. You can scroll through pretty much all the basic information right here, and then we can even go over and see our audio phone, navigation, settings, and you can customize the screen as well. Otherwise, you get your digital gauges. Right up here is where our toll haul mode button is, plus shift into low. You can get your plus and minus. Just tap that in for different transmission shifts to help you in your towing. Another couple big vents, and then we can get a 7 to 8 inch MyLink system. Of course, we get the 8 inch on this top trim, and uh, that will also come on the LT and up. This is a touch screen, and it does come with the Bose speaker. It's, it's a pretty pretty easy to use as you can see kind of the main menu functions up here up above So for example, we'll go to the phone it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Navigation as well on here. I haven't used the navigation But I've used my phone on here with Apple CarPlay and it does work well And then you can customize this quite a bit uh, This does have teen driver technology as well and several apps that you can see right here there's there's really a lot that you can see on this screen and of course you can customize it it is still fairly responsive though it is kind of getting outdated but it does work well and we do have some real buttons and they've got a nice texture around them so if you've got gloves on or um, you know you don't want to mess with the touch screen you don't have to and then down below we do get dual zone automatic climate control which is always welcome and that's on the LTZ and up you can synchronize them or customize each side again nice big buttons turn dial and it even shows you on the screen how your AC set settings are set up and right over here we have our ventilated seats which are three tier as well as our heated seats right here for the back of the seat or the bottom and the back and these ventilated seats work extremely well those are on both sides Moving down, we've got our pedal controls so that you can adjust the pedals in or out, whatever works good for you. Traction control, our cargo lamp, which uh, does work pretty good. We have the LED box lighting, our parking sonar for the front and back, lane departure alert right there, not actual assist, but alert, and then, of course, your diesel exhaust brake right there. Going down a hill, trailering, whenever you need that. Now you can be extremely plugged in up here. So we've got two USBs, we've got two 12 volts and an actual power outlet right there. You've got a couple slots right here and I've actually put an iPad mini on here and uh, not watching anything while I was driving, but you can put that there. So that's handy, you can put your phone there. Have a big storage bin right down here. Um, <laughs> You can put a lot of stuff right there. The only thing that would make this better is maybe if these cup holders could slide forward or backwards for more space. But these cup holders are accommodating. I can fit my large bottle in there. We had large drinks in there. Do you get a wireless charging mat? But my iPhone Plus does not fit on here. And it doesn't matter anyways because it doesn't charge wirelessly. But just something to keep in mind. Bigger phones do not fit. We do have a soft wide armrest this is very comfortable it's easy to share with the passenger open this up and we get quite a bit of space plus we get even more power outlets get an auxiliary port over there two more usbs and then another 12 volt over here nice and deep storage space right next to each side we do get another little storage space right there as well it's actually a little bit deeper than you might think that's on both sides when we go over to our glove box, we got two tiered glove box. We've got the upper portion, which can lock. It's a little bit smaller. Then we've got the lower portion, which is soft opening, just like that. We do have sliding visors. The entire visor will slide. You've got vanity mirrors and lights. And on this trim, we do have the um, auto dimming rearview mirror with our home link garage controls, plus our um, power sliding rear window right there and then we do have the moonroof up above just your typical size moonroof not to mention this these sunglass holders this is massive it's extremely wide unnecessarily so but it'll accommodate your glasses the big towing mirrors that I showed you on the outside 
Uh, they do work well. I do like how it does kind of have the, the bottom mirror, the top mirror as well, and then the projection lights off of that. Go to shift into reverse for our visibility. So we just have one angle, but it is a dynamic line and it's a pretty clear screen and it works pretty well. And you can even see the hitch right there to make things a little easier for backing up. The back seat of this heavy duty Silverado is still pretty comfortable behind myself. I do have pretty good knee space, pretty good foot space, and I do have good head space at five foot nine, like I said. These seats are a little bit upright. I wish there was a little bit of adjustability back here, but it's still comfortable. We do have this soft center folding armrest with two cup holders. If I kick that up out of the way, move over to the middle. I can actually sit in the middle upright without my head touching, and there's not a huge transmission tunnel, so that is handy. Plus, we do have the rear entertainment system right here. It comes with headphones and a remote, and we get two USBs, an HDMI, a uh, couple little cubbies back here in a 12 volt. The only thing is there's no AC vents back here. You have to rely on the vents from the front. And that is a huge letdown in my opinion, especially every day down here. It's been about hundred degrees I've had this truck. I have had people in the back and it's not fun trying to share your AC vent with people in the back. We do get a couple map pockets and on the door, the door does have soft armrest. It also has quite a few cubbies and a cup holder wanted to show you guys how easy it was to fold these seats up out of the way. We do have 60-40 folding seats. There is a little bit of space under the seats if you want to store something. And like I said, not a very big hump in the middle there. All you got to do, lift the seat up. And then you got a pretty flat load floor and you can do that on both sides. Just as easy to pull that seat down. All right, everybody, we're on the test drive portion here. Always my favorite. Starting out, we get that nice, healthy Duramax, that nice, healthy diesel sound. Uh, we're gonna get this thing up to speed here in a minute, but uh, some of my first impressions is that it's a very, you know, it's a very large vehicle to drive around. You have a big, brawny hood. Everything is, um, you know, I mean, you definitely sit up high. You feel like you're in a large vehicle. And of course you are, but it's not too bad to actually drive around town. I've driven this to work this week so far, put about 300 miles on it, and I've enjoyed it. You, you, uh, you got plenty of pep. The steering is fairly easy and fairly light, although at higher speeds, I do wish it was a little bit more direct, but you can't really ask for that much more out of a diesel truck, but let's see how it goes. It's got some pretty good go. For being a big lug like this, I believe it's about six and a half seconds, zero to 60, and that's very impressive. Uh, I, was, I was really impressed by that, actually. Uh, braking, on the other hand, is not the best, but again, for a big truck, you know, and it's got the Duralife rotors, so it's not like you necessarily should have to worry about the rotors warping or anything like that, but it doesn't come to a stop quite as fast as I want. The steering feel, like I said, it could be a little bit tighter, uh, but I like how it's a big steering wheel. Uh, it's not hard to turn. It's not laborious to, to maneuver this thing around. It's definitely not the tightest turning radius. The ride in here, it's, it's definitely very, very soft and very nice for a big truck like this. Um, the only thing is that I, I don't have any weight in it. It's unladen and of course it would be better with some weight in it or pulling something, but it can kind of toss you around a little bit and get a little bouncy when there's no weight in here. So you, you hit some, some uneven stuff and it'll kind of, it'll kind of th throw you around in here. But again, small complaint. That's not what it's for. It's built for towing. And I apologize that I don't have anything big to tow for you guys. I'm just about to get on some gravel up here, kind of get a feel for that and see how that is. One thing I was very impressed with was how quiet this thing is. So obviously at lower speeds or when you go to accelerate, you can hear that engine and you can hear the powertrain working. But once I got up to highway speeds, I took some decibel ratings at 70 and 75 miles an hour on the interstate and it was quiet. Uh, we do have the inlaid doors, um, triple sealed inlaid doors, which seems to make a pretty big difference 
and how quiet it is in here. So it's definitely a comfortable, quiet cab. I don't think anybody would have a problem using this as a family vehicle other than it's just, it's just big to get around. So we're just turning onto some gravel here. I like to see, you know, how it feels when you kind of throw it around a little bit, hit some uneven stuff. And I took it out here the other day and it likes being out here. It's, it, it's pretty comfortable to drive out here. Obviously it's a little bit bouncy, like I was saying, but turning radius isn't great, but it's not too bad. It's manageable. You can get, you can get where you need to go. I was trying to find kind of a mogul to show you how that automatic locking rear differential works, but the suspension was, it had enough wheel travel to where we couldn't get a wheel off the ground. We start to get to some of the uneven stuff. There's some, some decent grooves. The camera really doesn't pick it up as well as I, I wish it would, but I have a lot of confidence taking this thing on some pretty rough terrain without any trouble at all. Um, like I said, I was trying to find that mogul and I didn't even put it in four wheel drive. I just left it in two to see if I could get some wheel spin and didn't even need four wheel drive for anything. Um, here it is. Probably can't see anything on the camera, but it's not too bad at all. Hardly any wheel spin at all. No troubles getting around, so apologize I can't go off road and can't tow anything, but I hope you guys got to see what this thing has to offer. Obviously, it's a very nice cabin in this high country trim. There's a couple things that I'd like to see, like LED lights for sure, uh, some rear air vents for your backseat passengers. Um, of course, towing numbers could always go up, uh, and I'm sure they will in the future heavy duty series, but they're still very respectable numbers. Uh, if any of you own one of these trucks or own a, you know, a Ford or a Ram, let me know what you think of those as well. I, I haven't been in either of those or at least driven those. So I'd love to hear about that. I want to thank y'all so much for watching. Dave Erickson, thank you so much for having me on the channel. Please be sure to check out some more of Everyman Driver videos. Check out some more of my videos. My channel is called Prime Autotainment. Please be sure to check me out. I've got several videos. I will be also testing the light duty Silverado High Country and the Toyota Tundra right after this. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.